Um, nice to be here. I was invited to talk a little bit about Doodle, and I figured I um, cover some of the questions that I get asked a lot when I, when I talk to people in one-on-ones in the hallways in this conference or another conference. So I'm going to talk about briefly about the problem we solve, um, about how we monetize, and uh, some of the lessons that we learned along the way. We solve a very, very specific, a very niche problem, and it's a problem of bringing a bunch of people together for any kind of group event, whether that's a, a business meeting, a project kickoff, a, a board meeting, a night at the movies, a, a weekend in the mountains, or, or whatnot. And you all know the process when you try to do this in a classical way. The problem is that somebody has to do the coordination, somebody has to bring all the people together on the same page, has to make sense of all the, all the requirements, all the conditions, the comments that you get. I have to send, you have to use different uh, communication channel, channels. It's a tiring process. It takes a lot of time and a lot of nerve. What we try to do is we try to take the human coordinator out of the loop and replace it with a web application that does all the all the consolidation, all the synchronization, and in the end makes the process much more streamlined and efficient. We cover three use cases with what we, with what we do. The, the classic use case and the thing we stand for from, from day one is group scheduling, where again we bring a bunch of people together. The way this works is that the creator of a so-called poll um, offers a couple of, of options when to have the event. He or she then sends out a unique link with an identifier to all the participants that are invited, and they can then just go there, indicate their availabilities, and Doodle always shows the optimal time to meet. Of course, this also integrates with your Google Calendar, with Outlook, with iCal, with whatever calendar system you have to make it even more efficient. Next use case is one-on-one -on -one scheduling. This is organized around a personal URL. In my case, it's doodle.com slash Mike. There you can see my free busy information in an anonymized fashion. And you can give me a couple of options when you want to have the meeting to take place. And I can go and accept or reject them all or request different uh, options. Or, which is also important, I can si silently ignore the request and so I can later say, well, it must have landed in my spam folder, which is always important for plausible deniability, as you can imagine. Last thing we offer is also one-on-one -on -one scheduling. It's for customer appointment scheduling. So there we offer a way for service providers to offer their services uh, via, our, uh, via a, a, a web page that we provide. So their customers can just go there, choose whatever service they like, and, and, and uh, schedule an appointment with the service provider. With uh, what we provide, we've been pretty successful. We're currently at the run rate of roughly one, uh, one appointment every two seconds that gets organized over our platform. This amounted to 17 million appointments that were done over Doodle uh, during the last year. And that obviously begs the question, well, how do we how do we generate this growth? How do we generate this traffic? And there is one major reason for the user growth that we see, and it's based on the kind of inherent virality that's baked right into our product. So scheduling a meeting, scheduling an appointment with yourself doesn't make much sense unless you have a certain degree of schizophrenia. So it only makes sense with other people, and this in turn means that you invite other people to participate in your appointment schedule, and, and you, you, that's the way we, we get new people on the platform who convert with a certain probability to regular users. And then we try to not get in the way of our users, we try to make the service as simple as possible, as usable as possible. We don't require our users to pay anything, they don't have to install anything or download anything. In fact, they don't even have to register. They can just go on the site, enter their names, um, 
click uh, wherever they are, they are available and be done. So this leads me to the next question. With all this traffic that we have, people not even registering, how do we monetize? And our revenue stream is twofold. One of it is, is based on Premium Doodle. It's a paid service that we provide to individuals and, and other corporations and, and corporations and other organizations. And it offers a couple of additional features that make the process more efficient. It offers branding capabilities so you can have sort of a white label solution for your organization. And that's certainly some part of these 20 million users that we have each month that, that are monetized uh, on that. And it, in fact, adds very substantially to our bottom line. But uh, another very significant part of our revenue is based on advertising. And for the traffic that we see, again, a lot of it is by, by free users, by unregistered users. Advertising, in fact, is a very important driver to monetize that traffic. And I want to go through a couple of facts or, or again, lessons learned there. This is, we have a broad portfolio of different advertising products that we offer on desktop, on tablet, on mobile, and there are calendar-based ads and all kinds of ads that we offer. Some of them are text-based, some of them are image-based, and in fact, this is one of our branding ads products, and this is something that we have found works pretty well for us because it strikes a a, a good, for us, for our product, a good balance between a advertising customer's requirements and our users' needs. So our advertising customers, of course, they want to have as, re as much real estate as possible. They want to grab the attention of the user. And the user, he or she, just want to get the job done. And this is what we give with this. It adds, it gives our um, advertising customers a lot of real estate, but it just sits there in the background. It doesn't overlay uh, or, or interfere with the functionality, and it still allows the users to get the job done. And in fact, because we give this much uh, real estate to the advertiser, um, it also leads to more visually appealing ads that we have on the site rather than on other platforms where you have maybe a leaderboard, a skyscraper, and two rectangles. They all have different frame rates. They all compete with each other, which makes the, 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 the overall experience much more nervous for the user. In our experience, our users, they either like our ads or accept our ads, or at least, at worst, ignore our ads or at least they think so, as long as we ensure a certain level of quality. And they let, let us know very, very soon and very quickly once uh, the quality is not given any longer. So we work hard to ensure a couple of quality guidelines that we have. This is um, a couple of examples, examples uh, of those, very straightforward, obviously. One that is Maybe particularly interesting is the third one about um, optimized response times because in our experience, many platforms, they optimize around net response times where they only measure how long it takes their application to fulfill whatever function they do. But um, we think that gross response times are, are, are even more important. So we, we measure that one as well where we, where we measure how much, how much time it takes to, to load the whole page, including all the ads that are in there. So now we have all these eyeballs, all these users that potentially look at our ads. We have a number of, of ad placements on our, on our site that we, we can sell to customers. So the next question is, how do we find those customers? And we have found this, what I tell you now, sounds a little bit trivial, I guess, today, but it has taken us uh, some time to, to figure that out and experiment with how we work with partners. And we work with partners extensively in different types of markets. We have three types of markets that we define. The first one is shown here. It's uh, a market that's characterized by a high penetration 
measured by the, the, the number of overall population um, that there is in a, in a country. Uh, penetration of, let's say, 10 to 20 percent, which makes us a top 10 uh, site in Switzerland. Currently, we only have Switzerland in this type of market. And this penetration warrants us to have our, an in-house sales team that really goes out there and does direct sales to, to ads customers and agencies and such. On the other end of the spectrum, there's uh, markets with comparably low penetration, below maybe 1%. In, in that uh, category, there is the United States, even though it's, it's by absolute numbers the biggest uh, market in our portfolio. Canada, Italy, sadly Spain, so there's some, some work to do there. Um, this category we monetize based on networks only, so there's no human interaction there. And in our case, we work uh, extensively with Google Ad Exchange. We've had uh, a good experience with that network. And in the middle, in the mid-range, in the middle ground, there are markets such as Germany, Austria, France, and the UK. And there we follow a hybrid approach where we have a premium partner that sells high-priced advertising up to or down to a certain eCPM that we define. And everything below that eCPM we monetize based on our, our remnant inventory network, again, Google Ad Exchange. And what's important, of course, is with that revenue, we, we don't uh, share any revenue with, with uh, the partner in that, in that market. Last note, when we talk about ads, an interesting topic is always also ad blockers. And we've al always followed closely what other platforms reported in uh, what they, uh, about loss of revenue or, or ads, ads impressions due to ad blockers. And, and the interval is huge. Some platforms, they talk of like a couple of percent, 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 percent uh, low percentages, a couple of percents that they lose due to, to ad blockers and others, uh, name figures up to 50% of what they lose. So a couple of months ago, sometime last year, we tried to, to, to do our own analysis. So what we did is we detected if a user uses an ad blocker, and if they did, we showed this uh, leaderboard, uh, this skyscraper here. And if you think it is really ugly, I have to agree, but it's by intention. We wanted it to stick out, so we designed it on purpose to be a little bit ugly. So we, we made this message to the users, and we learned four things out of this. One is that, that users were really understanding and forthcoming. Many of the users who saw this, they wrote us an email and they said, well, we understand your problem and, uh, and that this is your business model. I'm not going to stop using an ad blocker, but I'm at least going to whitelist Doodle so you can earn again from my page impressions. So that was nice. Um, second thing is the amount of revenue that we lose due to ad blockers. We try to estimate that and it's, it's based on our estimations lower than what we would have expected. It's in the, in the, in the low one digit percentages. Um, third thing is we try to sell premium Doodle, a premium product, via this um, skyscraper. Um, you can see that there, subscribe now to become premium and, and ad free. This did work to some extent, but it was by far not our best upgrade trigger, so that doesn't work that well. And the last thing, and that was really astonishing, is how fast the ad block blockers were. So this thing only ran for a couple of days until the ad blocker noticed it and detected it, and again blacklisted this thing so it, it couldn't be shown in the future any longer. That's it already from my side. Thank you very much. And um, Keep in mind that we want to bring all these countries up to the other categories, so please use Doodle, especially in Spain. Thank you.